I'm Bob and I like to make stuff. Today we're going to make a bird bath that looks like a pokeball. It is cold outside and absolutely the wrong time of year to make a bird bath, but we're going to do it anyway. And that's because this pedestal has been sitting in my backyard since we bought the house. At some point, there was a bird bath sitting on top of this. I don't know where that is, but since we've got the pedestal, we're going to use it as an excuse to practice some concrete work, make a bird bath that'll fit on top of this pedestal, then we'll paint this up so it looks better. Let's try it out. For the top of the bird bath, you can make it any shape you want, obviously. I was trying to think of something that was a nice design, kind of elegant, and then I decided to just do something fun that my kids would enjoy looking at. So we're going to make it into a pokeball. Now this is good because it's going to be about the same all the way around, just a circle, and it's got two kind of pockets cut down into it. They don't have to be very deep, and then we can paint or stain the concrete to have the different colors that you would expect it to have. We need to pour that concrete into a form. So first, we're going to make the form on the CNC using some MDF. Usually if you're making a form out of wood, you want to use something like melamine because it's already got a coating on it that will keep the concrete separated from the wood. They won't stick together. In this case, we're going to be doing a 3D cut. So we're going to shape this. Melamine just would not work. So we'll deal with sealing this up after we get it in shape. Obviously you don't need to use a CNC to make the mold, but in this case, Josh has been working on it in Fusion, and he built up the shape for the Pokeball on top of a piece that represents the pedestal that we have. So we measured the pedestal, created that here in Fusion, and then he started modeling out this outer shape. This is what we want it to look like in the end, but to get this, we actually have to make a negative mold of it. He created a block that represents the material that this is gonna be in, and then knocked out the shape that was modeled from that block. So essentially, this is what the mold's going to look like. This is what we're cutting out of MDF. We got this off the CNC. Josh did a great job getting this worked out. There is some step over on this, so it left a little texture. So we just go back and sand that off. We also have to lay down a couple more pieces of MDF on the CNC and just cut out this ring that we can stack those on top of this to build it up so it's taller. That'll give us a little more depth in the mold to pour a thicker piece of concrete. We've also cut two circles and these are going to stack on top of each other to mimic the pedestal that this is going on. This is going to act as a plug. It's going to come in from the back side and be mounted across here. That way when the concrete gets poured in, this part will be a void. That way when this whole thing flips over, it can sit down on the pedestal. Next, we need to seal up the MDF. When we pour in the concrete, we need to have a seal between the concrete and the MDF so they don't stick together, so we can easily get these things apart. But also, the moisture transfer from the concrete to the MDF is gonna make the MDF expand and probably just destroy our mold. So, 
we're gonna coat it. Now you can do this a bunch of different ways. You can use polyurethane, polyacrylic, basically anything to create a seal in between the MDF and the concrete. So we're gonna use a varnish that we have here. We're gonna squirt it on and then paint it into all the surfaces. I believe the mold is all ready to go. Basically, we covered the whole thing with some varnish. We did two separate coats with the light sanding in between, then went over the whole thing with some beeswax. We've got it really sealed up. It feels nice and waxy, but even before putting the concrete on, I'm also gonna spray down some mold release. I don't know if this is really gonna help, but anything we can do to keep these two things separate, we're gonna do. For this project, instead of using a cement mix, we're gonna use a mortar mix. This should be plenty strong, and the reason I chose this is because it doesn't have big aggregate in it. It should have a much smoother finish on the top side. Now that I've got this just about filled in, I'm gonna grab an orbital sander, take off the sanding pad, turn it on, and just hold it on different parts of this. That should vibrate this a little bit to put all of the mortar mix down into the crevices and hopefully release some of the air bubbles. I pulled all the other stuff off and then let this dry a little bit on the inside. And now I'm ready to take out these two sections, but I realized that there's actually some cracks already happening. These two pieces popped out of right here, which is not a big deal because we can glue them back in, but it also gives me a way to be able to get my fingers underneath these two hemispheres to be able to pull them out. Unfortunately, when I start lifting them, I can feel all of this section move as well. So we do have some cracks on the inside of this. We're gonna try to keep this in place while we pull these out and then we'll just go back and glue back together whatever came out. We've got another little section that cracked here and we're gonna keep these pieces but it may actually be easier just to mix up some more mortar really thick, put it on here and then kind of form it into place and then maybe go back and grind it smooth or something. We'll figure that out. But I think there's a big crack that runs along here all the way through here. So this entire section is probably loose. We could probably go ahead and pull it out. Uh, this is all gonna have to be fixed back in place before we can put it on the stand. This is a landscape adhesive. It's made for putting different bricks and stuff together. We're gonna use this, lay down some kind of thick beads of it all over the entire surface and then squish these pieces back in place, wipe off the excess and squeeze out. And we'll see how that turns out. The adhesive worked really well, and actually if you don't know it's there, you probably won't even notice it. It's about the same color as the concrete. 
Originally I was thinking about painting this to have red and white and black, but I actually kind of like the way it looks just bare concrete. Unfortunately we do have to seal it. My worry is that by sealing it, all of that adhesive that we put on is going to be really, really obvious. So we're going to go ahead and put on a couple coats of sealer, we'll let it dry, see how it looks, and if we need to paint over that just to hide the adhesive, we can. Last night I put on two coats of that sealer and it's actually looking really nice. It's got a semi-gloss finish and luckily that finish hides the adhesive. So we're not going to paint this thing after all because I like the way it looks just bare concrete. I want to make sure that that works so we're going to do a water test here in a second. But also we put it on the pedestal to make sure that it could be level in both directions. Works out that it is. So after that test we're going to take it off, paint the base and then use construction adhesive to glue it back on. Pour that water in here and after just a couple of seconds we've noticed a bunch of little spots that are showing up and that shows me that water is soaking into the concrete so I need to go back and do a couple more coats of sealer just to make sure that it won't absorb all this water. I got the base sprayed with a black enamel. This should last pretty long out here, and if it weathers a little bit, that's fine too. We've got this out here, and I'm about to put on the uh, landscape adhesive to put these two pieces together, and it is really cold. It's like 18 degrees out here right now. I wanted to point out that this has a working temperature of zero to 100 degrees, so it will work fine in this temperature. We're just not gonna be able to put water in the bird bath quite yet. And here it is. It turned out really good considering I don't really know what I'm doing. I really just wanted to experiment with making a complex form, pouring the cement, sealing it up, and then luckily I got to figure out how to fix a crack and it's not too obvious. Now I didn't put paint on this or anything, that wasn't the point, and the Pokeball was not even the point. It was really just a learning exercise and I hope you learned some stuff too. We've got tons of other types of project videos that you may be interested in if you want to check those out. And if you're not subscribed, be sure to do that as well. That's it for this one. Thanks for watching. See you next time. And here it is. This thing turned out really cool. Really, 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 really cool. For this bird bath, I wanted to make sure that we had a shape that had just a little bit of concave so the water. I don't even know what I'm saying. I think this side is. <laughs> Please tell me you got that.